Next up, we have Gretchen Gano and Kelsey Shepard. Um, Gretchen is the social science librarian here at Amherst College Library, and Kelsey is the head of visual programs also here at Amherst College. They're here to produce, oops, sorry, to present on LGBT timelines, a really exciting and interactive project. Thanks, Marissa. Um, and Gretchen and I are here um, in, and uh, professors Javier Corrales and Julio Capo are here in spirit with us. Um, as unfortunately, well as all the students who've been working on the project. That's in the last true. Year. More than I could name in three minutes. So we won't. <laughs> um, the LGBT Rights in the Americas Timeline Project is an interactive timeline charting significant events in the history of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender activism in the Americas and eventually around the globe. The timeline will serve as an open access data visualization uh, platform for an extensible digital data collection. The struggle for LGBT rights has been described as the civil rights issue of our time. And despite the proliferation of scholarship on LGBT issues across the academy, um, within activist communities, and in the general public, no comprehensive digital resource currently exists that aims to capture the history of LGBT rights in the Americas. The few sources that do exist focus almost exclusively on the United States. Imagine the possibilities if, with the click of a button, you could browse, surf, and eventually share key moments in LGBT history. We're a group of faculty, librarians, IT experts, and students working together to create the first digital timeline of this struggle. In its pilot form, supported by the Five College DH grant, we have begun to display the existing data using a program called TikiTaki, a web-based platform for creating and publishing um, timelines. Fully implemented, the timeline will offer three main services. First, it will capture and make openly available event data. Uh, this will allow users to easily read news stories, keep informed on past and current debates, and plot out diverse trajectories of movements. Second, we'll develop uh, special search and analysis tools that allow users to create custom-made subsets of the data to retrieve, organize, analyze, and produce visualizations of the data according to various themes, uh, <laughs> not just according to time or region. Third, the platform will create opportunities for citizenship journalism. It will act as an open resource for students, scholars, and others who can contribute additional data. That means it will be a collaborative project, one of great public significance, keen on offering diverse opinions, experiences, and resources. This is interactive learning at its best. As we continue to develop this interactive timeline, more functions and ways to visualize the data will become available. Some exciting examples of the ways we could further develop this program include online data analysis, support for social media sharing, crowdsourced contributions, and more. We will also be getting more feedback from researchers across the globe, and we hope to convene a planning meeting in the spring. Um, so that's our uh, three minutes. We'd like to thank the Mellon Foundation and the Five College Digital Humanities Group for making this project possible, for fostering new and exciting relationships across the campuses, and for helping us engage students in the digital humanities. <laughs>